again and welcome. This is Robert Shine, Managing Director, Partner of Blanky Shine Wealth Management. Thank you for joining us for our Tuesday Market Insights and Observation Edition post Labor Day weekend. If you're in Southern California, it was a hot one here. I'm sure it was across the United States and it's welcoming in the fall. I mean, I'm sure if you're at the grocery store or, you know, the, the big box suppliers, uh, you're seeing uh, everything fall from October you know, the Halloween stuff to the Christmas stuff as well. And so that's a welcoming sign because that also means baseball playoffs. That also means the kickoff right now, football this week, and a lot of other great things. So markets are looking forward and they're always forward pricing. That's why we're seeing the volatility. Let's start right there. We saw volatility in the markets last Friday. Uh, on the heels of, of just basically the Federal Reserve talking about data dependency, but having to be more hawkish uh, on a go forward basis. And that's actually what's going to happen today. We're seeing uh, economic data that came up and came in a little bit better than anticipated that then shot interest rates higher. And when interest rates go higher, they're pricing the assets of essentially the equity market lower. And the reason why that is, is because uh, the equity market is pricing in higher um, basically hawkish Fed or higher interest rates and potentially for longer. So this is going to be the same story. We have uh, Jerome Powell this Thursday. He's going to be speaking and we're going to have to see what his tone is at this point in time. We're just going to have to make it through in the meantime. But what are the markets paying attention to as we are here at Blanky Channel Wealth Management? Well, there's 62 days to the midterms and that's a race. Now, again, it doesn't matter if you're red or blue. Our clients are all about green and that's what we want to make certain has ha that happens for them here at Blanky with management. So we position appropriately, but why the midterms matter, it actually moves markets. And historically speaking, if you look at it, and we'll dive deeper into a Friday Insights upcoming soon to show you the overlay of the midterms and how markets react post uh, basically the November uh, election day. And the reason why is because the certainty is not here anymore. In fact, markets are volatile for several different reasons. I already talked about the Fed, the potential recession that we're in, that we're not, or that the Fed could cause, right? There's still potential for a recession 2.0 for 2023. Economic data, if it's too hot or too Goldilocks, um, you know, then the Fed has to continue higher for longer with interest rates. But if it's Goldilocks, uh, then it's like, you know, either which way the market will then position itself. Oil right now, it's actually come down and it's traded down. Uh, we believe our investment management team here at Blanky Channel Wealth Management, we actually had our, our group meeting this morning and we don't believe that oil will be down lower for longer. We think structurally, uh, both sort of what we're seeing play out in Europe right now and all that geopolitical uncertainty uh, and sort of the things coming into winter is going to play off. So oil is going to be hot or higher for longer, we believe, long-term, and then obviously midterms that we're talking about right now. But why do, why do markets have um, sort of a rally post midterms, historically speaking, since the early 50s? And the reason why is, is because you basically have gridlock in midterms. You basically think, uh, you know, both sides are basically have to come to the middle of the compromise to getting legislation basically passed moving forward. And that being said is that slows the spending. Uh, especially if you have all everyone in you know all sides of Congress on one side, uh, they could pass whatever they want, and or tax whatever they want, and so legislatively, uh, they have control. So if you divide Congress, markets like that, so you can't spend. And we got a spending problem here in the United States. It's quite clear. We've got an inflation problem. And so if you add more spending, that creates more inflation. I don't care how you cut it or how you want to justify it. That's just the facts of actually economics 101. So that could be a good positive sign for the markets moving forward if we see gridlock in November. So that's what the market's paying attention to. So we are too, and we're positioning uh, either way accordingly. And then finally, right now, the market volatility continues because the Fed of QT, quantitative tightening. So we know Federal Reserve's raising interest rates, but they're also running off their $5 trillion of balance sheet liquidity. So they kept buying bonds, especially in the mortgage-backed securities, uh, uh, during the financial crisis because there was a lot of unknowns. They want to make certain that the economy can stay running and then reopen accordingly. Well, what happens is they start selling those bonds or basically just letting them mature and run off. And as we saw on the mortgage back uh, basis, right, they're not buying those mortgage backs. And so what's happening is those baskets are having to find open market support, not artificially low support. And we saw the interest rates go from 3% to 6%. So now the market's basically saying, hey, listen, I'm not going to jump in. Uh, the private market's going to say, or institutional market's not going to jump in at 3% mortgage back uh, security. Uh, they're going to say, 
let's see what the market will bear. Well, we went from 3% when the Fed was artificially purchasing those to keep the liquidity in the real estate market, right? Think interest rates and mortgages. Now the fair market is in the sixes. That's why we see our interest rates on uh, our real estate go up. It's exactly what's happening. And that's because the Federal Reserve is the quantitative tightening. So that's really putting the brakes on the economy. That's also putting the brakes on real estate. And it's a trickle down effect. And that's what the Fed's trying to do. They need to they need to uh, fight the, the tide of inflation right here, stem the tide of inflation. And they have to slow down the jobs number. So they're not going to stop. The Federal Reserve is not going to stop with this tightening. They're not going to stop the balance sheet runoff and the interest rates until we see material change in the tight labor market. That's their words, not mine. And that's what the markets are paying attention to. So we believe we're going to see interest rates lower or higher for longer. And so what is in the meantime, what do we pay attention to to get us through this period of time? Potentially a trading range, which could be good for the uh, S&P and all the indices as we're paying attention to March and October and working our way through October, uh, is we're going to be looking at the earnings season. So what the corporations, when they finally do report after the third quarter, what they say, are they going to revise down? for 2023, their earnings expectations. And that's when we could see material change or down leg in the market or a serious up jump post, let's call it the midterms and the corporations actually giving guidance that's sort of fair to Midland, nothing too exorbitantly higher than what's expected, but nothing too drastic, meaning that the consumer is still strong, uh, even though the real estate's slowing down a little bit, an employment picture might be changing, we could still see uh, that it could be, again, a Goldilocks scenario for earnings. Now, keep in mind, this is a marketplace of you don't want to own everything out there. You want to own some select companies that have the ability with the strong management teams and the balance sheets and the cash flow to actually get through and grab market share while markets are uncertain and their, their industry is uncertain. This is the time when you make the most money, essentially, as you're a small business owner or your corporation. We're seeing that play out. If you look at the Wall Street Journal as we're reading every single day. The headlines are showing the have and have nots. Those companies that are executing uh, excellently and greatly through this business environment and those that are challenged. And we all can see in the headlines, those who are having challenges as of late. So we don't want to own all of them. We want to own those select A-class students, maybe even the B that could be an A-class student at the end of the semester. Uh, but we kind of avoid the Ds and the Cs because they're obviously distracted and they have their off the, uh, off, off the, or out of the classroom balance sheet or out of distractions. So we're looking for those. And that's why you want to own certain stocks with certain management teams on a go forward basis. So that's our update for today. Volatility will continue, uh, but we're getting closer to some certainty as we close to year end. So that's it. If you have any questions, please call us at Blanky Shine Wealth Management. We're here to help. Thanks for watching.